the theme from the Sears Radio Theater. Tonight, a story of the West with Lorne Green as your host. Here's a preview. I tried to tell him why I quit football, but he wouldn't listen. Your father will listen in the morning when you two put the feet out. He always does. Ma, this time's different. I let him down in front of everybody at the stock show. That ain't something you forget like yesterday's rain. The Sears Radio Theater will begin after this message from your local station. Is there a Mrs. Samuels at home? Oh, this is she. Uh, Mrs. Samuels, this is Peters. Uh, I work with security at the Mutual Liberty Building. Where my husband works? What is this? Uh, Mrs. Samuels, um, your husband has collapsed here in the lobby. Oh, no. Uh, he was gripping at his chest, you know, uh, some kind of seizure. We've got an ambulance on the way. What hospital is he being taken to? I'll be right Mr. Samuels was having a heart attack, as will a million other people this year. More than 600,000 of them will die. The American Heart Association wants everyone to learn cardiopulmonary resuscitation, CPR, so that heart attack victims will have a better chance. CPR can sustain the life of a heart attack victim until emergency medical care arrives. CPR was pioneered and developed by the American Heart Association. Support your local heart association. We're fighting for your life. This is Lorne Green. Welcome to the Joslin County Fair. Biggest little state fair in the great state of Texas. Oh, we may not attract the plethora of high-rolling cattle buyers who promenade the Houston Fat Stock Show, but Joslin laid the chunk. And to a Texan, that hallmark of tradition is top draw. The fairgrounds... A tad damp from last night's hailstorm will be open well past midnight. Sorry to disappoint, though, the stock show judging just ended. All the winners were duly recorded. Our latest shareholders in Joslin's rich history. Ned Harpage's Aberdeen Angus Bull, they call him Boo, took first place for the third year in a row. I guess that's what's causing Leland Foree to raise such a fuss. Losing to Ned is hard for Leland to swallow after three generations of feuding. Considering the land the Hartridges and Puris are feuding over, well, it's surprising no blood has been spilled in the name of folk justice. Sheriff, it's a sorry day when Joslin judges seal their votes on a bull just because the owner's stone broke. Leastways, the law knows where it stands. I came over to extend the cattleman's regrets not to take sides, Leland. I grant you, Boo is a hefty monster for an Aberdeen, but he ain't worth three years of blue ribbon. Those back-slapping judges turned my stomach green. The judges are appreciating the man. Ned's family's been through a hard year, and God bless them, they haven't forgotten how to laugh. Well, I'll hand him a thought to remember. Why don't you leave what is be? You'll have another shot at next year's fair. Boo can't last forever. I aim to own Ned's bull before next year's fair or see him out of the county, Sheriff. And that's only the beginning of our story. Sears Radio Theater, a new adventure in radio listening. Five nights of exceptional entertainment every week. Brought to you in Elliot Lewis' production of... The Sears Radio Theater. Our story, Bull Story, by Bruce Martin. Our stars, Norman Alden and Parley Bear. The Sears Radio Theater is brought to you by Sears Roebuck and Company. Sears, where America shops for value. Sears National Automotive Sale. Now, save $36 to $76 on a set of four Sears steel-belted radial tires. That's great savings on the most popular radial in Sears history. And the Sears heavy-duty shock can help save you from some of the jolts, jars, and jerks. Help save you some money, too. On sale now, only $5.99 each. Save 14% on America's best-selling shock. Installation available at most Sears tire and auto centers. Prices may vary in Alaska and Hawaii. Stop. Summer starts for your daughter with Easy Care halters, tanks, tees, and jogger shorts in colorful teens to switch around all summer. And each Sunny Bunch piece has a sunny saying and character screen print. Tops, shorts, and play sets that pack a pretty punch when it comes to pets and sportswear, the choice is Sunny Bunch. Jump into summer with Sunny Bunch funwear for your girls in sizes 7 to 14. 
This Terry outfit I'm wearing from Sears has all the energy of summer. But what was once just for running is now charged up fashion for your whole sporty day. Terry tanks, v-necks, racing, jogging, and boxer shorts in a range of washable colors and styles. In misses and junior sizes, nine to twelve dollars for the tops, just six to seven dollars for the shorts. Look like a pro at having fun in Terry. Shoo! Prices may vary in Alaska and Hawaii. Available at most larger Sears retail stores. In Texas' turbulent past, a fuss over nothing has been known to lead to a feud. Texans have a name for a feud that ends in violence. They call it folk justice. It's not uncommon to hear stories of families feuding for generations. The cause of their fuss buried long ago with their ancestors. But in Joslin County, the Hartridges and the Forees well remember the spark of their land feud. Leland Foree is in a sour mood after losing to Ned Hartridge's stud bull at the Joslin State Fair. It's easy to tell when Leland's angry. There's more bounce to his step. And he's bouncing pretty good now on his way to the Hartridges, who walk their bull, Boo, out of the show ring. Oh, oh relax, Boo. Bobby, you drive the pickup round back to the exit. Your mother and I'll walk Boo out of the show tent. Yes, sir. If you'd move out of the ring, Boo, we'd all go home. Watch the gate, Marcy. It isn't going anywhere, Ned. Well, congratulations, Hartridge. Blue Ribbon third year running is something to crow about. You're blocking the gate, Leland. Kindly step aside. Oh, it's a nice surprise hearing congrats from you, Leland. Well, <laughs> Boo's a surprise. Imagine the judges naming him a masterpiece of Aberdeen breeding and him coming from simple folks like yourself. We ain't exchanged more than a stray cow past 20 years. No point in straining neighborliness tonight. Well, Sandy and I talk about how little we see of our neighbors. Ever since your oil rig came in a dry hole back in 58. Well, please tell Cassandra how everyone missed seeing her pink caddy parked outside the fair tent. Will do. I phoned Sandy in Paris this morning and she was all tears over missing our stock show. Sandy decided she spent so much of my money on her Paris originals, she had to sacrifice this year's fair. Oh, poor girl. I know how much Cassandra loves cows. <laughs> <laughs> of course, Sandy's animal appreciation pales beside your own, Marcy. Odd, ain't it? You being a New Yorker and all. Pittsburgh. I'm from Pittsburgh. Well, then you must be glad to be in Texas. Sheriff of Jocelyn County, it was my responsibility to stop any trouble those two feudists might start. So when I overheard Leland toss that Far Easterner dig at Marcy, I fully expected to arrest Ned for rearranging Leland's jaw. But Ned just sort of bit his lip and walked boo past Leland. Step aside. Yeah, now, now, hold on a minute, Ned. I heard you folks had a hard year. The crying shame Uncle Sam don't underwrite you cattle ranchers the way he does us oil ranchers. And talk around the fair is, you're considering selling, Boo. Took a lot of hot air to scatter the fog, but I finally see what Leland's after, Marcy. Boo is Hartridge raised, and Hartridge he'll stay. Hey, watch who you running over with that bull. I asked twice, now I'm moving you aside. Uh, uh, tell me, neighbor, you ever plan on buying your little wife a dress she can promenade in? Don't answer him, Ned. I'm standing rock still with my back to the man for everybody to see. I've got to answer him. I'm offering enough cash flow to buy that dress for Marcy and cover next year's feed bill. I'd be paid with money that comes from land that belongs to my family. Who stays put? How much you worth, Ned? I bet you ain't got enough assets to bait a mouse trap. That's a limit. Ned, you know Boo spooks easy under fair tents. Lead rope is tied through Boo's nose ring. Now hold him. Make a wise decision for once, Ned. Sell Boo to me. I said hold the lead rope. Who causes any fuss? You twist his nose. It isn't Boo's nose. I want to twist. Now stop it. <laughs> Sheriff, you're as bad as the rest standing around watching. You stop him. Something has to happen for me to stop, Marcy. People have a legal right to insult each other in public. If that's what they want to do. Leland... Your great-granddaddy might have been keen to cheat my great-granddaddy at poker, but I won't have no foray rub my nose in it. Who stays put? Hell with cheat. Great-granddaddy Harvey signed deed over to us for ease himself. He was stone drunk. Every living soul in Jocelyn County knew he was a temperance man. How does a temperance man lose 40 acres of prime grazing land in a drunken poker game? Even preachers been known to down a few now and then. 
Forget what happened to Chunky years ago. I'm talking about buying boo. Now you're talking about buying boo with money from Hartridge Grazing Land. It come in for re oil gusher. God forbid the bank could be foreclosing on my ranch tomorrow. I still wouldn't sell boo to you. Yeah, it's only natural for you to dry hold when you sank pipe, neighbor. The oil game smiles on a lucky man, and there never was a lucky Hartridge born yet. I'll own Boo someday and cut him up for market. What, what's he talking about? He ain't ever laying hands on Boo. Your father and Mr. Foree are having a discussion. Oh, I'm glad you came back, Bobby. Take Boo's lead rope. My arm hurts from holding him still. Well, here's a sight. Backless Bobby Hartridge holding Boo's lead rope. You chasing a bloody nose, Leland, or are you going to apologize to my son? Apologize to a quitter? I'd call dropping Jonathan High football a week before the season opener pretty backless. My son's told me how Bobby walked out on the team. Now, that ain't true. Bobby quit football, he'd have told me. Cool down, Ned. Wouldn't do to start something you'd regret later. Uh, sir, You don't believe I... me, after boy. Yeah. It's true, sir. I left the team last week. <laughs> boy hasn't even got the courage to tell his own father he quit the football team. How backless can you get? Bobby, walk Boo out to the pickup. No, I want Bobby clear of that bull. I want him clear of me, too. Almost summer, and there I was, still in my winter sports shirts, feeling the heat. So I went to Sears and discovered a summer sports shirt collection. Some interlock knits caught my eye with full button fronts in solids and patterns, and they're short sleeved. This is a style I can feel comfortable in. Better yet, the interlock knits of polyester are easy care. My wife likes that. Now I'm looking forward to those lazy summer days ahead, wearing my new crisp looking shirts from Sears. Looks like it's going to be a hot one today with 90% humidity. It's the kind of weather that makes you want to drop into Sears for their most popular blend underwear. Why? Because it's a blend of 65% polyester for strength and 35% comb cotton for softness and absorbency. With a two-way stretch for the comfortably snug fit men appreciate, especially in the warm, active months ahead. So drop in and discover Sanfronet t-shirts, undershirts, and briefs. Who's going to do the dishes? Now is a great time to let Sears do the dishes. Because you'll save $50 on selected portable and under-the-counter dishwashers. Now through May 26th. Help save on energy while they work for you, too. Since the water miser cycle uses less water than normal wash, and the power miser option dries with cool, forced air. So save $50 and let Sears do the dishes. Dates may vary in Alaska and Hawaii. All items available at most larger Sears retail stores. Between the Hartridges and the Four Rees had been going on long before I became sheriff. Folks all across the great state of Texas know the story how Ned Hartridge's great granddaddy lost a patch of oil land to his neighbor, Leland Four Rees' great granddaddy, in a drunken poker game. The Four Rees built themselves quite a bankroll off that land over the years, enough money to buy anything in Jocelyn County. Except, of course, Ned's prize Aberdeen bull, Boo. I think it was spite that made Leland do the next best thing he could to hurt Ned after Ned refused to sell him, Boo. Leland stole young Bobby Hartridge's pride. Marcy told me later how angry Ned was on the ride home from the fair. Why'd you turn off the highway, Ned? This is the rig road. What good will looking at a busted dream do any of us? Uh, this ride's for me. When we reach the rig, you two stay in the truck. Why? I want to look at where I've been, okay? I mean, why alone? Because it don't come back no other way. Hmm. I feel rain in the air. Nice to be home and dry when it falls. You'll be dry in the truck. I tried to tell him why I quit football. But he wouldn't listen. Your father will listen in the morning when you two put the feet out. He always does. Ma, this time's different. I let him down in front of everybody at the stock show. That ain't something you forget like yesterday's rain. 
What's that sound? The wind banging the oil rig's drill pipe against the structure. What's Dad got to stare at his dry hold rig for? Maybe the rig helps him think. Nobody needs a rotted monument reminding them of a dry hole. Not when you have a 4E pumping jack 60 feet away working double time on black gold. Besides, the next twister will finish what the first one started. Tearing down that old rig's rusted cross beams and girders. Your father knows he can never get back the oil land your great-granddaddy lost to the 4E's. He's considering right now. What kind of considering? Moving. Off the ranch? Out of Jocelyn County. What? He can't do that. Bobby, you already gave up football for the ranch. Down the years, wouldn't you want an easier life than what your pop is facing right now? Fourteen-hour days, seven days a week most times of the year, and never enough earned to pocket. Always spending on this bill or that repair for the ranch. But I enjoy ranching. It's what I know best. I hope to raise my own prize bull like Boo someday. I read in the Jocelyn Herald how more young girls are moving to the big cities than ever before. They want no part of a rancher's life. It's too hard. You married a rancher? Then you ain't even Texas born. I married a man and have lived with a rancher. I love my man. But sometimes I don't understand the rancher. Well, ranching's what I like. I don't want to move. Well, we'll see what your father decides. Your mind's already made up, isn't it? Yes. <laughs> Can't afford a new one. Yes, sir. Can I bed Boo down? There's no call for you to worry about Boo anymore. Boo's no longer your responsibility. You are punishing me because you think I'm backless like Leland Foree says. I'm punishing you because you had me believe you were still playing Jocelyn High football when you wasn't. Now bed yourself down, Bobby. Morning chores fall on your shoulders. Good night, sir. Some chocolate drops left in the kitchen. Leave one or two for your father. Now, he can eat them all. Fiddle players ain't my pleasure tonight. I have to admit, those DJs play some decent music on the radio after midnight. I just ain't in the mood to hear it. That's coming from the barn. Come on, boot. Get back on my foot. You fit this morning. Yeah, there. What is going on in here? Well, look who's busted out. Boo! Boo, you miserable prima donna. Move your tail back in this barn. Boo, you sure played one mean carpentry number on this barn door. Boo, get back here. I hope the rain soaks you to the bone for busting down the barn door. Ah, rain won't irritate a dumb bull. His dad and me will be miserable looking for you in the rain. No, Boo? I think we're going to let dad sleep. I'll bring you back myself. And no one, not even dad gonna call me backless. Sears Radio Theater will continue after this message from your local station. Dear Abby, a listener writes, now that my husband's gone, I've tried to open my own charge accounts and have been turned down. It seems all our credit was listed in his name. Now I'm told I have no credit record in my own name. Signed, Stuck. Dear Stuck, this is a real problem for many women. Four out of five of you will one day be on your own. But if you know your rights, you can help protect yourself against future credit rejection. So take some advice from Dear Abby. Call All Right Stores where you and your husband share charge accounts. Have them listed in both names, yours as well as his. Say you want joint charge accounts listed as Mrs. Mary Jones as well as Mr. John Jones, so you will have a history of credit too. The law gives you that right. 
For more information, write for the free booklet, Women and Credit Histories, Federal Trade Commission, Washington, D.C., 20580. That's Women and Credit Histories, FTC, Washington, D.C., 20580. Chills run up and down your spine. There's a creeping sensation at the back of your neck. You're listening to CBS Radio Mystery Theater. I'm E.G. Marshall, your host for these hour-long dramas of suspense, adventure, and the macabre. Heard seven times a week on most of these stations. Here's a sample of what we mean. This very room reeks of dejection, despondency, undusted cobweb furnishings, black drapes covering the window. Here, let me throw them back and at least get some moonlight, if not sunlight, into this place. In the doorway. What is it? (laughs) Madeline, am I that horrifying to look upon, dear brother? Listen here for CBS Radio Mystery Theater seven times a week on most of the CBS Radio Network stations. High school teenager carrying the Wrangler's rope across the grassy expanse of wet Texas plain is Bobby Hartridge. In rain-soaked blue jean jacket and pants, he doggedly stalks Boo, the escaped Hartridge prize bull. But Bobby is caught up in much more than a quest to rope a three-quarter ton bull. He's fighting to win back the respect he has lost in his father's eyes. Respect Leland Foree, the Hartridge's feuding neighbor, destroyed when he showed Bobby up as a backless quitter in front of everyone at the Joglin County Fair. Boo, will you quit spitting away? Boo, you're backing up in your dad's rest of old oil rig. I've been chasing you more than a mile. Oh, blind your Aberdeen Angus eyes. You moved and I landed in the mud. I don't appreciate eating any more mud tonight. Leave them stuff my belly full of the fare. That's the way. Turn to the right. I get you cornered against Dad's dry hold rig. We'll discuss this further. I said right. You're supposed to be the finest bull in Joslin County, not a jackass. That's it. Back yourself up against the rig. Won't hurt a bit when I tie this lead rope through your nose rig. You got gotcha. you. And now hold still a minute. We'll walk home where it's dry. Move, move. The rig's collapsing. Move. It was only my second day on the job as Jocelyn Sheriff when I was introduced to the feud between the Hartridges and the Four E's. Ned had found a stray Foree calf out on his rig road and asked me to return it, explaining his vow never to set foot on Foree land in the same breath. That was the day I first suggested to Ned he'd tear down his derelict oil rig. I said, Ned, that rig's an accident waiting for a time to happen. Ned answered, It's my dry hole rig on my land and I'll do with it what I please, thank you. When Ned walked out earshot, his son Bobby came over and told me not to worry. Next twist is so much as breathes on that worthless rig, it'll fall. But Bobby was wrong. All it took to crash Ned's rig to the ground was a hard rain and one escaped bull named Boo backing up into the rig's structure. Of course, me and Bobby's parents had no way of knowing that at the time. Midnight. Why are you getting dressed? Yeah, thunder woke me. I went into the kitchen for a drink of water and noticed the barn light on. You turned that light off before you went to bed. Yeah, Bobby must have left it on. Boo's busted out of his pen. Bobby's gone, too. Oh, I'm coming with you. No, honey, you, you stay in bed and sleep. Bobby and I'll bring Boo back. I'm coming with you. I'm worried about Bobby. Boo sours in the rain and Bobby's out there alone. I don't see what the boy thinks he's proven by bringing that bull back on his own. I'd say it has something to do with the fuss you and Leland Forey had at the fair. Yeah, sure. I understand that. All right, if you're coming along, you best dress for the weather. Rain like this should last all night. You won't, 
behind Bobby, but driving around in circles. And just slow down, Marcy. Bobby's old enough to handle Boo on a wet night. You saw what Boo did to the barn door. It tore the hinges out of the wall. Foul weather turns that animal temperamental. Lucky thing for us, sons and bulls don't melt. We'd have a real problem if they did. Where do we look for Bobby first? Well, we'll head out back of the barn, work our way out to the road. Rain's blowing towards the road. I've never seen an animal yet that enjoyed having the rain blown in its face. Think he could have gone as far as the road? Depends on how long Bobby's been chasing Boo. Could be more than a mile away. Ned, when you were standing alone out at the rig tonight, what did you decide? Eh, nothing. I told you I was looking at where I've been. But you promised to consider moving off the ranch. I was considering. Living on the ranch keeps Bobby shut inside himself. No girl, no more football. Only Boo and the rest of his chores. Yeah, well, who's to say moving would do Bobby any good? Running from a problem don't solve it. Hey, here's the road. Besides, where the ranch stock is now, only one who'd give me a fair price would be Leland Foree. He'd do it just to tell folks he ran us hartridges out of Jocelyn. Bobby's our only child. I want him to be happy. Well, he's happy in his work. Many a wealthy man wished he could say the same. Now, I'll give Bobby a call. What are you listening to? Ain't you hear it? What? That. I still don't hear anything. It's Boo. He's out there calling somewhere. Oh, I hear him now. Boo only moans like that when he's scared. Well, that thunder sounded off close. Means more rain. Did you see the rig? I was watching the lightning. The oil rig's half turned on its side. I saw it in the lightning. I'll drive by the rig. Bobby might have come out that way for a look. Kneeling down beside that collapsed rig leg. Ned, Bobby's pinned under the rig. Bobby, you don't have to hold Boo's lead rope no more. The girders are crushing his leg. Quiet, quiet. Uh, I sort of made a mess of myself, oh. sir. Uh, your mother will take Boo's lead rope, son. She'll tie him up on the other side of the rig. We need help, Ned. I'll handle it. Is Boo all right? Not a scratch on his blue ribbon body. Come on, walk over here, Boo. Son, can you feel your leg? Uh, yeah. That's the reason I've been crying. My leg's broke for sure. As long as you can feel your leg, you cry all you want. Ain't a thing to be ashamed of with all that steel crushing your leg. Now, give your old man a few minutes and he'll tow this whole damn rig away. Hurry! I'll work as fast as I can, but these girders will, will have to be dragged off one at a time. Oh. Marcy, tie this tow rope to the bumper hitch on the pickup. Okay. Now, the other end of the tow rope is hooked around the top girder. You watch Bobby while I drive. Yeah, when that, when that rope's taut. Okay. Make sure your window's open. I'm moving the pickup forward. Taut. The rope's pulling on the girder now, Ned. Right, right here. Here goes. Stop. It's crushing oh. my leg. Stop. Oh. Stop the truck. Oh. What's wrong? The truck pulled the girder down on Bobby's leg. Here, let, let me see. We need help. Bobby's face is chalk white. That's, that's to be expected. Bobby ain't as strong as some young men. He's a lot stronger than you give him credit for. I'm calling for help over the CB. Uh, use Channel 9, then. The, the emergency channel. Breaker, Breaker. I have an emergency on the Hartridge Rig Road. Need immediate assistance. Come on. You have a what, Marcy? Oh, Sheriff. Your voice is sweet as the song. One whole side of Ned's oil rig fell on Bobby's leg. He's trapped under the rig. Is he bleeding? I don't believe so, but we can't see Bobby's leg under all the steel. His leg broke bad. This sure hasn't been Bobby's night. <laughs> I've more bad news for him. I haven't left the ferry yet. I just got in my car when your call came over. But that's 70 miles away. I'm on my way. I'll radio ahead for help, but just about every emergency vehicle in Johnson County is out here on the fairground. <laughs> what do you need to free Bobby's leg? T tell him we need a winch. Ned says we need a winch. Well, Leland Foree's pickup as a power winch, he's your best bet. I asked the Forees to stay on their side of my barbed wire fence, nothing more. Marcy, do you read me? Hand me that mic. Sheriff, this is Ned Hartridge. You're putting me between a rock and a hard place. I'd be much obliged if you brought a winch with you. I don't carry one in my pocket, Ned. Winches aren't cigars. 
What you turn the CB off for? I ain't asking Leland Poirier for squat. I should wait for the sheriff. Bobby, stop playing hero for your father. I don't want to scare you, honey, but you've got a compound fracture, and your legs bleed. It ain't bleeding. I, ooh, I can tell. Sir, I want to explain why I quit football. Forget what Leland Poirier said about you in football. You're showing yourself a tall man. That's what matters. I told Mom I quit so as I could help more around the ranch. <laughs> Wasn't true. Save your breath. Save your breath. You hear? I quit football because I... Well, uh, I never seen him hurt so bad before. And that we need that winch. Because I... I didn't like hitting people no more. <laughs> He's passed out. Did you see how he held Bo's lead rope when we drove up? Yes, I saw. But how brave are you? You aren't man enough to ask Leland Thorey's help, are you? Where do you think you're going? To borrow Leland's winch pickup. Oh, well, the hell you are. Now get down out of that truck. Is your pride more important than Bobby's leg? I told you to get down out of that truck. My pride stays here with you. Are you saying you're going? Sheriff said Leland has the only power winch around. Leland will want the pleasure of hearing me ask for his help, not you. Do me one other favor before you go. Leave the shotgun with me. Now, what makes you think Leland won't shoot an unarmed Harkage? Yeah, I'll leave the 12 gauge with you. God, take care of you, Ned Hartridge. And our son. Painted strawberry stoneware has delectably sweet country looks. And durable, this dishwasher safe stoneware resists chipping, cracking, or fading, even when exposed to your oven, freezer, or microwave oven. Enhance your table with these pretty strawberries from Sears. Strawberries! Sears stoneware with hand painted strawberries! At most larger Sears retail stores. Oh, here I go again. It's time to rent one of those steam-type carpet cleaners. Why rent? Now Sears puts power in a carpet cleaner you can own yourself. The Power Spray from Sears for easy home carpet cleaning. Power Spray sprays hot water into your carpet, then sucks up the dirty water. You can see the dirt you get out. Dirt you didn't even know was there. The Power Spray Carpet Cleaner, a convenient carpet cleaner you can own yourself. Available at most Sears retail stores. Kenmore. <coughs> Solid as Sears. Sears National Automotive Sale. Now, save $36 to $76 on a set of four Sears steel belted radial tires. That's great savings on the most popular radial in Sears history. And the Sears heavy-duty shock can help save you from some of the jolts, jars, and jerks. Help save you some money, too. On sale now, only $5.99 each. Save 14% on America's best-selling shock. Installation available at most Sears tire and auto centers. Prices may vary in Alaska and Hawaii. Stop Lorne Green again, and here's the concluding act of Bull Story. Texas sheriffs keep track of feuds, a routine part of our job. So I knew the feud between the Hartridges and the Fourries to be a classic, even by Texas standards. That's why the needle on my speedometer crept higher and higher as I drove out to Ned Hartridge's collapsed oil rig. How I expected Leland Foree to lend Ned his winch pickup truck just to help young Bobby Hartridge free his broken leg from under Ned's dry hole rig is beyond me. Asking Ned and Leland to cooperate in a fevered situation like that was knocking down trouble. So I pressed toe to pedal and fought the slick highway. Later, out on Ned's rig road, I found the trouble I expected. But that was later. At the time, I was still wondering what kind of greeting Leland would give Ned when he came to call. Anybody but the IRS pounding on my door this time of night better have a damn good reason. It's Ned Hartridge, Leland. Bobby's broke his leg, pinned it under a pile of metal out on the rig road. I need to borrow your pickup with power winch. What sort of metal is he buried under? My rig collapsed on him. <laughs> I knew that rusted old rig of yours would cause you grief someday. You see what's in my hand? Yeah, I see it. This here is my personalized 44 Magnum. 
has my initials monogrammed on pearl handles. Now you walk away from my door and stand out in the yard where I can see you. Look, the sheriff sent me to you because you're the only one nearby with the power winch. Remember tonight at the fair when I told you my wife was dress shopping in Paris? Well, my two boys ain't home neither. Ain't no witnesses around. It's far enough away from your door for you? That's real fine, neighbor. Now, this key's the one to my winch pickup. Uh, I... Now, I didn't say you could fish them keys out of that mud puddle so fast. You might make my 44 go boom, you do that. You want to hear me say it? I will. I'm in your debt, Leland. Now, that don't matter to me. All I care about is helping Bobby. <laughs> I'm an oil man, Ned. I don't accept no debts, especially when I can have something I want in payment. I'm picking the keys up now. I'll return your pickup. Uh-oh. <laughs> the trigger sort of slipped. Lucky for you, ain't it? The gun was pointed at your feet. You want my wind to pick up? I want what you wouldn't sell me at the fair. Boo. You pick up them keys, and I assume we made even trade. You keep the pickup, and I collect one Aberdeen Angus bull named Boo. I got no hands for trouble. I said drop them keys. You're bargaining with the wrong man. Boo ain't mine to trade away. After tonight, Boo belongs to Bobby. I ain't afraid to shoot you in the back. It's just your style, Leland. I'm coming for that bull. The keys are in the ignition. You can follow me out to the rig in my truck. Save me the trouble of returning your pickup. I'm collecting my bull, Hartridge. Your father proud. Where you hung on to Boo's lead rope when we found you. What's it gonna be? Dad decide to sell the ranch? Well, I'd like him to. We moved to a nice city. One with scads and scads of pretty young girls for you to choose from. That's no place to keep Boo in a city. He's back, Bubby. He wasn't excited none about me barring his pickup, wanted me to trade Boo for his winch pickup. You didn't trade Boo. No, I told him Boo ain't mine to trade. Boo belongs to Bobby now. Bobby will be so proud when you tell him. Bobby, this cross beam up here is solid enough for me to use as kind of a pulley. Drop the winch cable over the cross beam so the winch would be able to lift them girders off your leg. I'm waiting. You hang in there, partner. Boo's yours forever and a day. You mean it? I'll give you my word on it. There are headlights coming down the road. It's too soon for the sheriff to show up. I expect that'll be Leland. I'm here for what's owed me, Hartridge. In five minutes, I leave either with that bull or my winch pickup. You can't take advantage of Bobby like this when he's hurt. Marcy... I'm collecting my end of a business deal. He ain't taking Boo. I'd rather lose my leg than lose Boo. Son, neither of them things are going to happen, are they, Leland? Well, I'd say your boy's got some grit after all. Hell, it's a sorry day you can't depend on a neighbor in a life or death situation. I won't forget you lent a helping hand. Uh, Bobby puts me to shame the way I've been acting. Here, let me run that cable. I can handle a winch better than you. I was doing a good job with the winch. Are we going to argue about this too, Ned? <laughs> I mean, it is my pickup. Uh, the keys are in the ignition. Okay. Let out the cable. Be with you in a minute. Ned! Hey! Leland's driven off! Here's the shotgun! No, Ned, you can't shoot him. <laughs> Sir, no four E's worth of murder charge. Get out of the way, Ned! Marty! Get your hands off the barrel. No, Bobby's right. It'd be murder. Much as Leland deserves it, you'd still be in the wrong. You let him get away. It's too late. Leland's out of range. Leland's gone, Ned. There's nothing left to shoot at but the night. I'll see Leland's time come for this. I buried my pride to ask that skunk's help. You buried your pride for Bobby. The sheriff will be along with help any minute. <laughs> oh, damn fool, I didn't tear this rusted rig down years ago. <laughs> oh, Ma, please stop crying. I can wait for the sheriff. Yes, it's your fault. 
I told you to sell this junkie for scrap 20 years ago. None of us are to blame for what happened to me. It was, it was an accident. Of course, there's blame. Land's to blame. No, it's good land. It's Hartridge land. Land's all dried up like this rig. Gave us neighbors with hearts of stone and nothing to show for our hard work but one pretty blue ribbon at the fair every year. Oh, we got boo. Your mother's right. <laughs> boo ain't nothing. We've seen a lifetime investment turn into a couple of gallus empty hands. I'm sorry, Bobby. We're selling out. With Boo, we can build up the stock again. And then we'll be in the money. Now you come off telling me what this ranch needs. What are you doing? Leave me alone. You can't move steel with your bare hands. I'm rocking the top turtle. Now try moving your leg, Bobby. No good, sir. My leg won't move. You ain't trying. But I am too trying. Have you gone crazy? Somebody's coming down the road. Oh, it must be the sheriff by now. If it is the sheriff, why'd he come alone? Oh, that ain't the sheriff. Somebody explain to me why Leland's coming back. Put the shotgun down, Ned, please. Leland's come back to help Bobby. That's what matters. Not to me. Shot, Is that you, Sheriff? It is. I met Leland out on the highway. He insisted I ride with him back here. Seeing Ned pointing this 12 gauge explains why. Now, my job isn't to play Solomon and decide who's right or wrong in this feud. I'm here to help Bobby. I ain't asking for nothing else. Then stow your 12 gauge and let's set about freeing Bobby's leg. Huh. Looks to be enough clearance for Ned and me to swing this last girder out of the way. Yeah, yeah that, that, that done it. Bobby's leg is free. Okay, Leland, let it down. Oh, oh. Uh. Bobby, your poor leg's like a bent twig. Yeah, oh. sure hurts. But it is nice to see my toes again. The way that steel hit you, I'm surprised you don't have a compound break. I expected you to bring some help with you, Sheriff. Well, the entire Jocelyn County Fire Company is heading this way. I just outdistanced them when I left the fair. The whole fire department, huh? Wasn't a man who didn't volunteer to help when they heard you were pinned under the rig. You and your father have a lot of friends in Jocelyn. Oh, we thank you, Sheriff, for making Leland drive back. I only had to explain the situation a little to bring the good Samaritan out in Leland. You mean Leland made you pull your gun? Not quite, but almost. I heard that. That ain't no way to be thankful. I didn't have to come back. You didn't have to come back until I commandeered your pickup on the highway. Hey, when folks hear what you've done tonight, they'll judge for themselves who's backless, Leland. Yeah, folks will ask, who moved all that rusted steel off Bobby Hartridge's broken leg? And you'll tell them I did it. And I'll tell folks how you tried to steal Boo. Uh, keep your bull, son. You got one full year to crow about him. Because at next year's fair, I'll own me an entry that'll make Boo a faded memory in the judge's mind. Never happen. Leland, I think it's time you dropped the lead in your britches and drove home. Boo beat any animal that belongs to a 4E. Dad, tell him. Watch the leg, Bobby. Dad. Ah. Uh, Told your mother we'd sell, son. You don't want to sell the ranch no more than I do. No, no, I don't. Then you tell him, Ned. Leland? Something on your mind, Marcy? Uh, before you leave, I think it's only right for you to know what to expect at next year's fair. <laughs> you making excuses already? Boo will beat any 4E entry, hands down, as is the custom. Yeah, well, we'll see about that. Off you, Leland. It's odd how money makes some men so cantankerous. Don't see how Leland can stand living with himself. Leland Foree ain't so bad a man. What? I ain't sure my ears are working. What was that, Bobby? Well, way I see what happened tonight, Leland Foree's the man I ought to thank for helping the Hartridge family decide to stay in Joslin County. Why, I'm much obliged to him. Oh, oh. Get out, boo. <laughs> Here's a riddle 
for you women to solve. I'm one of the first things on in the morning, one of the last things off at night. With slacks, skirts, and shorts, I look so right. Who am I? Give up? I'm the shirt. The wear with anything shirt from Sears. I come in both pretty pastels and assorted prints with short sleeves and tailored styling. And I'm easy care polyester. So go with the go with anything shirt. For smart spring and summer fashion, buy the shirt in the Mrs. Sportswear department. A good night's sleep. That's important to you. How your mattress is constructed should be important, too. Sears Best Imperial Elite Mattress has mattress within a mattress construction. The inner spring model has individually pocketed coils covered with polyester and urethane. The polymeric foam model has individually molded comfort islands for even support. Only at Sears. Sears Best Imperial Elite. A mattress within a mattress. I'm on my feet most of the day, and when my workload gets me going, one thing I can depend on for comfort is my die-hard work shoes from Sears. We've sold thousands of pairs of Sears Best Die Hard Work Shoes. They're designed for men who want a comfortable fit as well as a ruggedly constructed shoe. Our Die Hard Work Shoe is cushioned from heel to toe, plus the sole is warranted. If the sole wears out in one year, return pair and we'll replace it free of charge. Die Hard Work Shoes, as tough and dependable as their name. All items available at most larger Sears retail stores. The Sears Radio Theater has been brought to you by Sears Roebuck and Company, where our policy is satisfaction guaranteed or your money back. Sears, where America shops for value. Bull Story was written by Bruce Martin, produced and directed by Elliot Lewis. Your host was Lorne Green. Our stars were Norman Alden and Parley Bear. Featured in the cast were Tommy Cook, Mary Jane Croft, and Barney Phillips. The music for Sears Radio Theater was composed and conducted by Nelson Riddle. This is Art Gilmore speaking. The Elliot Lewis production of Sears Radio Theater is a presentation of CBI. Here's a tip from your Better Business Bureau. When you shop, remember that there's more than just the price of the product to consider. There's also the reputation of the seller. And if you have a question about reliability, check with your local Better Business Bureau. It's also good practice to check the warranty, what it does and doesn't cover. It's also a good idea to find out if you have to pay for shipping if the merchandise must be returned. And check to see what other charges, if any, you're going to have to pay. Another way to be a careful shopper is to know something about the policies of the store or the seller. Consumers should find out what the return policy is. Does the store give cash refunds? Does it provide credit on future purchases? Does it allow returns only on certain products and not on others? Look, you better get all the facts before you buy. This has been a consumer tip from your Better Business Bureau. This is Mel Blank and Voices of My Business. In Warner Brother cartoons, you probably know me as the crazy little character... Daffy Duck. <laughs> or... Uh, Porky Pig. Or... Me, Bugs Bunny Duck. We all have a voice in matters that affect us in our community. And it's necessary to speak out to get the best possible community services. One community tradition which really deserves vocal support is the library. The library has been serving up all kinds of information ever since this country began. After all, you can get thousands of voices in the library's books on film, records, and tapes. And you can borrow these voices freely. But the library can't give you such good service without a lot of vocal and personal support from you. This means you need to write or call your community officials and speak up for the library. It's all there, folks. Library. A public service message from the American Library Association and this station. Tomorrow's Sears Radio Theater will be a comedy with Andy Griffith as your host. Let's listen. A divorce? Just because I want you to have the best...